What's up, Brian Tong here on the first leak of the new M4 MacBook Pros just dropped today. And then on top of that, we just got the first benchmarks for the new M4 Mac chip a few hours ago. So let's jump right in and then we'll cover everything that we expect to see at Apple's rumored October Mac event. So yes, lots to talk about. Now an alleged unboxing of the yet to be announced 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M4 chip was just posted on YouTube by Russian channel Wilsacom. And of course, nothing is official until Apple announces it, but here's the four things that we learned from the unboxing video. This 14 inch MacBook Pro will come with the anticipated M4 chip for the first time on a Mac with a 10 core CPU compared to the current M3 chip that has an eight core CPU. The M4 chip in the iPad Pro that was announced in May had up to a 10 core CPU option and up to a 25% faster performance than the M3 chip. Now there have been rumors that 16 gigs of unified memory would be the new minimum for all future Macs and the alleged packaging on this model also shows the MacBook Pro will start with 16 gigs unless this was somehow a build to order model, which I don't think it was. Now this 14 inch MacBook Pro will also have three Thunderbolt 4 ports up from just the two ports on the current 14 inch model. And the box also suggests that space black will be a color option as well for this presumed base model M4 MacBook Pro. Now last year, space black was only available as a color for models with the M3 Pro or the M3 Mac chip and not the standard M3. So you can check out the video on YouTube for yourself. If you wanna see more, it is in Russian, but you know, sometimes it's good to wait a little to just let things settle even more because new benchmarks for one of the upcoming M4 MacBook Pro models popped up on Geekbench just a few hours ago, revealing some more tidbits and insight into the performance of the M4 Mac compared to the M4 iPad Pro and previous M3 Macs. Now this mystery Mac identified as Mac 16.1 was benchmarked with a 10 core CPU, presumably the M4, and showed a single core score of 3,864 and a multi-core score of 15,288. Now, according to Mac rumors, if you're comparing it to the M4 iPad Pro, we've seen an aggregate single core score of 3,647 and a multi-core score of 13,135. The current iPad Pro comes in nine core and 10 core configurations, depending on the storage capacity. And the 10 core model hits around 14,500 on their multi-core score. So this new purported M4 MacBook Pro outperformed all of those M4 iPad Pro configurations. Now I'm also not gonna break down the specific numbers, but here they are based on comparing the new M4 MacBook Pro with the 10 core CPU tested against a base model M3 Mac with an eight core CPU. Now single core score performance is up 26.7% and multi-core score performance is up 30.6%. We know Apple had claimed the M4 iPad Pro was at least 25% faster than the M3 and this looks like it holds true as well for the M4 Mac. Now this is just one benchmark and there are always different results which is why I run my benchmark test 10 times for my reviews but this still gives us a data point of what to expect. Now, metal scores also surfaced from the Geekbench benchmark test for GPU performance. The Mystery Mac 16.1 that was tested had a metal score of 57,603, and the M3 chip had a metal score of 47,414, showing an improvement around 20%. Now, future scores will have some slight differences based on the thermal differences for different sized MacBook Pro models, but this is, again, a baseline. And for someone like me who has an M1 Max, and sees this type of performance, look, I've held out this long, and now we're talking about a significant difference from my computer that came out at the end of 2021. Look, I'm intrigued, but I'll wait to hear what other new features are coming to the M4 Mac chips directly from Apple before I need to make any final decisions. And the reality is that Apple Silicon is already so good for almost everyone. Like, I would say the only Apple Silicon chip that you might feel is lagging a bit right now is the original base model M1 with eight gigs of unified memory. But if you aren't doing any major task intensive stuff where you rely on your machine to render out 4K video content as quickly as possible, you're more than good to go with what you have right now. And for me, as a content creator, I am personally excited about this, but if I was just doing email, word processing, surfing the web, some photos, hey, there probably isn't a compelling reason to upgrade just yet. And I've said it before, and I know it does sound silly, but Apple made their silicon too good for the general consumer. Yes, it's a good thing. It's also that impressive. 
and also you just don't need to upgrade as much. All right, let's just take a moment to thank the sponsor of our video, Alumu. Alumu creates unique urban textile cases and accessories that are solutions for the modern lifestyle, and I mean unique. So let's check out the M1 folding charging station. Its folding design makes it easy to carry, that's space saving, and it has an adjustable MagSafe charging panel for the best angle. This 4-in-1 stand charges an iPhone, AirPods, Apple Watch, and has an additional USB-C output at up to 10 watts for four devices. It comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable and a storage bag, but you can already see Alumu's unique style and aesthetic here. Now they also have the A11 Mag Buckle Slim Band for the Apple Watch. It's compatible with the larger Apple Watch models that started at 42 millimeters and up to 49 for the Ultra. It has a strong magnetic quick release to make it easy to take on or off. And there are two sizes of the soft nylon band that's rugged and lightweight for a wider range of wrist sizes from 145 millimeters to 225 millimeters. Okay, next up the A9 geometric case for AirPods Pro. This is something out of a Batman movie with its unique styling. It's a solid shock absorbing shell with a zinc alloy lock clip that secures them at all times. It also has a removable hook and loop lanyard and it's wireless charging compatible through the case. Then there's the A15 case for iPhone 15 series phones made from vegan leather and scratch resistant. There's an aluminum ring around the camera for added protection. They have aluminum buttons and a cooling design for CPU heat dissipation. There's a strong magnet inside with MagSafe support and drop proof around five feet. And then we also have new A16 cases for the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max. They come in two colors, classic translucent gray and clear translucent white. They're also made from 100% TPU and are scratch resistant. Their frosted cases even have a glow in the dark feature. There's an opening to support the camera control and you can see the strong MagSafe magnet through the case itself. Three of their other cases with a temperature indicator change color when temperature is getting high. Plus it also has a unique cooling window design as well. So check out all these accessories and more from Alumu with their truly unique urban textile accessories. Okay, let's get back to the stories and we know the new M4 chip in the MacBook Pro will be one of their showcased products, right? One of the flagship examples, but this is a great chance to now talk about everything that we expect to see at Apple's anticipated October Mac event. Now we absolutely expect to see new MacBook Pros with the M4 chip in both 14 and 16 inch display sizes. No major design changes are expected this year and a switch to the rumored OLED display and a thinner design. That isn't expected to happen until 2026 at the earliest, but Apple M-Series laptops are already multimedia monsters and will continue to be with this M4 chip inside. Now rumors have also pointed to Apple finally updating the iMac with a new M4 chip. Remember the new iMac design debuted with the M1 chip in April of 2021 and I loved that throwback nostalgia while looking fresh and new. Now at the time, we all thought, hey, maybe they'll finally upgrade their accessories. There's currently an M3 chip inside the iMacs today, but those accessories still haven't changed. So will we finally see a new magic keyboard or a magic mouse that doesn't charge from the bottom, making it unusable and arguably the worst ergonomic mouse ever? Or a new magic trackpad with USB-C Come on, this has to be the year that they finally switched to USB-C, right? Right? Well, we will see. Now we're also anticipating the biggest change to the Mac Mini we've seen in years with the new redesign. According to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, the new Mac Mini will be nearly as small as an Apple TV, but taller. And these renders show us what it could end up looking like. Hey, Apple, just call it the Mini M4 Cube, but you know that they won't. This new M4 Mac Mini will reportedly lose all of the older USB-A ports and come with five USB-C ports instead with the two in the front of the computer. Now the Mac Mini hasn't seen a redesign since 2010 and obviously this will be a perfect time to do it with the new M4 chip. Now in Mark Gurman's latest Power On newsletter, he also added that the next gen Mac Studio and Mac Pro machines equipped with their own M4 chips are set to come out sometime in 2025. He has the Mac Studio targeted for the middle of 2025, which could point to a WWDC 25 debut in June next year. And then the Mac Pro will come out in the second half of 2025, potentially in the fall of next year. Both systems would use the M4 Ultra flavor of the chip, which have yet to be announced. So we aren't expecting them at this Mac October event. Now the next MacBook Air is also expected to appear sometime in early 2025 to round out the transition to the M4 for all Macs by 2025. Okay, and the final new product at the event, 
the rumors have been going really strong for this new iPad mini ever since Apple's fall event with inventory said they were getting low across retail chains. Well, the iPad mini 7 has been rumored to launch by the end of this year, but could also see an appearance at the rumored Apple Mac event this October. Now, I don't know anything, but with the M4 Mac lineup just being so significant and jam packed with all those products, the iPad mini feels a little out of place to me just to show up. So I'm going to just throw out a guess, right? These are tight quarters. I can't do a full, but you know, throw, just toss out, you know, I'm going to toss out the idea and this guess that Apple might release it on its own separate from the event. You had a product listing from Best Buy leaked out earlier for the new iPad mini as well. That has now been deleted. You got the seventh generation mini that's rumored to feature a faster chip that would likely support Apple intelligence. You would think an upgraded front and rear cameras and a fix for that jelly scrolling issue where you would see lag from the screen refreshing. If you moved it up and down really fast, that should be resolved. Plus, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3 support, and a potential new batch of colors. You know, I'm thinking, let's match them with the latest iPhone 16 lineup. Look how much buzz that got. That would be an awesome move. That's just me. And hey, throw in a nice, like, re rich, deep purple, kind of like back here while you're at it, Apple, yeah? All right. Now, there could also be a new entry, lower level, and 11th generation iPad as well, right? The base, base, base model. And we've seen it get refreshed with other iPads in the past before. So we'll wait and see. But I just got a feeling that the iPads will be their own separate thing. And then the Macs will have their own time to shine at a big event from the fruit company in Cupertino or wherever because it was in New York last year. Plus, Mark Gurman also claims Apple intends to launch iOS 18.1 on October the 28th. And this would feature the first release of some of Apple's initial Apple intelligence features to the general consumer. Now I did a full deep dive on them with the beta. It's on this channel, you can check it out. But if you haven't experienced it yet, this will include the new writing tools features for proofreading text and changing tone and more. Plus you got the new Siri interface with that glow and the ability to make corrections when you misspeak something. There's summaries for notifications, emails, text messages, and others. Plus that new cleanup tool in the Photos app to remove items in the background. But the big flagship Apple intelligence features are expected later in December and beyond. That's including chat GPT support to fill in questions that Siri can't answer. There's image playground to create your own images on the fly. And then Genmojis for those custom emojis that you just wanna make and have fun with your friends, which when I first saw it, you knew it. It'll easily be the most popular part of Apple intelligence, the most consumer friendly, whether or not they think it's Apple intelligence or not. But everything from the new truly personalized Siri that connects all that information on your phone together to make it truly like what your brain thinks and knows and what your phone knows is the same. That's really the main distinguishing, kind of the key feature of Apple intelligence. Plus you got visual intelligence that uses the camera control. Um, they tease that on the iPhone 16 release. Those could be coming a lot later as in 2025 later and would likely still be in beta. So sure, yes, Apple intelligence is coming, like some of it. But like I said, in my review of the iPhone 16 Pro phones, the number one reason to upgrade to the iPhone still won't be fully ready until 2025. And by that time, you might as well wait for the next iPhone if yours works perfectly fine for you. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for coming back after the hack with the channel, with which the channel, I can't even talk, which the channel is still recovering from. So I really appreciate you all for coming back. Thanks for your support. And hey, if you're new here, if you like what you see, give me that thumbs up subs up and hit that notification bell ding to get all my latest videos when they drop and if you want more of that apple goodness you can check out my weekly apple bits xl audio podcast with the latest stories and special guests plus you can support all my content with an ad free version of the podcast early access to my content and exclusive content at patreon.com slash brian tong so thanks so much for watching take care and we'll see you in the next video peace and love